name's Arvon Smith. I'm Director of Citizen Science at the Adler Planetarium, and I'm also Technical Lead for Zooniverse, which is a collection of web-based citizen science projects. And the Zooniverse projects really um, depend on finding projects where human intervention or human eyes or human ears have to be in the mix, right? Right. So we look for, um, uh, I guess, analysis problems, to typically, where um, the premier method is still the human the human eye or brain or you know human cognition. Uh, and we try and take a, a, an ongoing research uh, challenge. So there may be a group who are trying to classify galaxies by shape, so they have a team of people doing that anyway. And we try and translate that into a task that we think members of the public could could easily achieve. So it's, uh, but it fundamentally is the common thread is that we ask ask of scientists for research problems where where they rely on the human brain still. And how did you get into this? How did this start? So I um, I actually joined a year in a year after we'd launched a project as a collaboration called Galaxy Zoo, and that was a uh, about five years ago now. And this was a project that invited members of the public to uh, say something about the shape of a galaxy. So these were galaxies from a robotic telescope uh, and. Uh, we asked people to basically say whether the galaxy was a spiral, like our own Milky Way, or an elliptical. These are two distinct types of galaxies. Um, yeah. So why is that difficult for a computer algorithm to figure out? Well, it's actually so you can get to a relatively, um, you know, you can get to a moderate level of completeness with an algorithm. So some, maybe something like eighty percent right. But the issue with the algorithms is that you don't know what you're getting wrong. And so when you need, uh, uh, and so each algorithm that's been developed, and there's been a lot of effort put into this. Um, each algorithm that's developed is better at one thing other than others, one thing other, uh, compared to another. So maybe a basic morphology uh, classification, or maybe you're trying to count spiral arms. But there's no, there's basically no algorithms out there that are sufficiently good to answer uh, uh, in the coverage level that's required for some of the science that uh, astronomers do. There's, uh, there aren't algorithms out there that can achieve the level of completeness that uh, a human classifier can. So this is why astronomers still classify galaxies by by their eye. By eye. And it's, uh, it's fairly routine still. So how many people are participating in the various projects that you've been undergoing? So we've had uh, over the last five years, over about 10 different projects, we've had about 650,000 people have done something, so have maybe classified a galaxy by its shape or uh, listened to a whale, co whale song or something. Um, and But ongoing, I mean, uh, something like Galaxy Zoo probably has about 5,000 regular uh, contributors who are there week in, week out. Um, it really depends on you know, different phases of the project. So you were saying in the talk that, that one critic was saying these people aren't behaving as scientists or behaving as scientific instruments. So right. I took exception to that. Well, <laughs> I took exception to it, but then I also think there's an element of truth in that. So I think, um, you, you know, I think this is something I, I would like the, the field of citizen science to really uh, address, that there are some things that um, people help with. So if you take Galaxy Zoo at its most basic, um, it was a problem of trying to invite a large number of people to analyze, help us analyze data, something we were already doing and just scaling that up. Now, if, if you came to Galaxy Zoo and classified one galaxy and then never came back, um, then I think all you've done there, and we, you know, we thank you for your time and we're going to derive scientific value from that, but all you've done there is help us with that analysis. So in that sense, I don't think that's acting as a scientist. Um, I think you know, wouldn't, you know, there's lots of nature of science is a pretty wide, pretty wide topic, but um, you, know, you could say that acting as a scientist is maybe forming a hypothesis, testing that, collecting data, and reaching some conclusions. That's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, fair, fair test of science, I think. And, and certainly people who uh, on the initial come to Galaxy Zoo and spend some time classifying galaxies, and uh, you know, a significant number of those transition uh, uh, through from this kind of first level engagement with the project through to an engaged, kind of sustained contributor to the community where they're developing new research projects, working in collaboration with the science teams, authors on papers. And so I think, you know, I think it's a spectrum. Um, and I think uh, the statement about uh, citizen science being an instrument of science, I think in some cases, and for a large number of the community, that can be true. But I, it's not always true. And I, I think I, I, where to draw the line is a, is a very difficult, difficult question.